talk is called Retrofitting Control Flow, um, and it's about a lot of things. Uh, on the face of it, it's about retrofit, um, which is, if you haven't heard of it or used it before, it's a popular annotations-based Java library um, for Android that manages the comp composition of API calls and marshalling of those responses into POJOs, or plain old Java objects for you. Um, as a library, I find retrofit to be quite elegant. Um, it's also about if, if you dig a little deeper, and by that I mean if you read the second or second and third words of the title, um, you'll discover that this talk is also about control flow. Um, specifically, uh, how do decisions about error handling impact control flow in an application? Um, and last and least, obviously, uh, it's about how decisions that library maintainers make impact architectural decisions of consumers of those libraries. So that would be the downstream devs like you and like me. Um, cool. So before I get into like the content of it, I'd like to give a little bit of background um, about retrofit. Um, so for those of you who aren't in the know and who perhaps do not use retrofit, um, retrofit version two was released sometime last year around DroidCon NYC, which I believe was in October, uh, August. Um, it's been through a few beta releases since then. It's currently in beta 4. Um, I hear that the official 2.0 version is coming tomorrow, um, but don't quote me on that. Um, but it was pending an update to some multi-part APIs. Um, the update to version 2 was a breaking change in that the project maintainers um, were very forthcoming about this. Uh, so I would like to focus on one of those changes, one of the API changes that had the biggest impact on my applications at Electric Dog Decks. Um, but before I get started, how many of you here today have ever used Retrofit? Okay, that's, that's most everyone. And how many of you are using a 2.0 plus version? That's not as many people. Um, how many people are still on 1.x? A couple people. And how many people like have no idea they don't use that Retrofit? Like, Lisa, what are you talking about? Okay. See one hand in the back, two, all right, cool, okay. Um, that's cool, hopefully you don't have to know much about retrofit to understand what I'm talking about. But So I'm gonna talk about error handling in retrofit. Um, starting off with version one. Um, so in version one, when an error occurred, retrofit would throw an error um, of type retrofit error. So this is some code that I had in my app to handle errors that happened when I was making a request. Um, I had this custom like request object that would do a make request, um, and then if it worked, I just return that request object, and it have all the information encapsulated in it. But if there was a problem, it would throw a retrofit error, and I could catch it, and then um, you could figure out what type of error it was using like a case statement. Um, there were four types of errors that would come back. Um, a network error meant something went wrong, SSL was like messed up for some reason, or the device was offline. HTTP meant there was a problem in the server, so it successfully connected with the server, it got a response back, but the response code was like above 400, 400, 500 range, which meant you had a problem. Um, so it would throw an error and end up in that bracket. Uh, conversion error meant that the JSON you were expecting, or whatever message format, and what you received were structured differently. Um, in other words, your conversion library choked. Um, and then an unexpected was anything that's not any of the above errors. Um, oops. Uh, so there were some downsides to this. Like, for successful calls, it made it nearly impossible to get any metadata about the call that you made, like what the um, headers were or what your actual response code was. Um, but overall, it was pretty nice. Um, on the nice side, it let you write code like this, um, where you could just assume that whatever came back worked, because if it didn't work, it would have thrown an error, um, and then do maybe a little bit of logic on it and return like a Boolean from this like completely abstracted away from what you were actually using, um, which was kind of nice. Um, so if something went wrong, I didn't have to worry about it. Retrofit would just like eject me from the code and I'd end up in my error handling block, um, which is nice. Um, it was particularly handy if you wanted to do some hacky stuff like this and make more than one call. Um, so in this example, I'm making one call to get my favorite shoes and then I'm making a separate network call to get my friend's favorite shoes and then adding them together and returning like this combined set. So I could make more than one call in this like kind of abstracted away block of code. Um, 
and then it would all come back to me like once this both of these network events like happened. It was great. I could chain things together. Um, this isn't very handy if you're doing anything where you need to know where in the process it went wrong because it doesn't tell you. But when you're just doing like guts for information, it's totally fine. Um, if it didn't work, it didn't work. And that's, that's cool. What else? Um, or at least that's how my code used to work. Um, Retro 2 Fit 2 came out and everything changed. Um, the way that they handled errors in version 2 um, was significantly different. So. Um, uh, this is what my error handling block looks like now with version 2 of Retrofit. Um, you'll notice that there's no longer that one catch block. I now have two different catch blocks. Um, the Retrofit error type is completely gone. Um, now, um, network errors end up in the I.O. exception. Um, unexpected errors end up in exception. I also I think conversion errors also end up there, but I could be wrong. And now, once I get a response back, I have to check to make sure that the HTTP code was actually a good HTTP code before I continue. Otherwise, I have to handle the error separately, um, which is fine. Like, so another way of saying this is that like, a successful call like, inside that try, try catch is not the same in version two as it was in version one. Um, and here's another kind of list of the differences. So in V1, if no exception was called in in like the try catch block, that meant a bunch of things. It meant I connected to the server successfully. I successfully received like a successful response of JSON that was parsable and fit the spec. And here's your object. Do whatever you want with it because it totally succeeded. In version two of Retrofit, that kind of like definition of like an error was changed as far as like the the try catch goes. Um, what it meant if you didn't get a try, if you didn't get an exception, was it connected to the server and received a response. Notice that I didn't say anything about the validity of that response, merely that your server is up and functioning and you can talk to it um, and it's sending something back. Um, cool. Which, so basically, like this meant that those multi call blocks that were kind of fancy before, all of a sudden I have to do more checking in them. Um, I make my response and then I make sure that it's a success, and if not, I have to return an error of some sort before I can like proceed on with assuming that both of them are correct. Um, so basically, it, basically the change in V2 took some of my, the error handling code that I used to be able to like kind of abstract away into this try catch block, now got baked into like more places in my application because I'm checking to make sure, verifying that I actually got the response back that I wanted from the API before continuing. Um, but this brings up a really interesting thing about programming in Java. Um, as we all know, Java is a strongly typed language with some, some generical capabilities. Um, but typically, this means that a function can only return one type of object, and you have to know that object's type at compile time. Um, so put another way, one method call will return one object type. Um, but try catch blocks allow you to get around some of this restriction. Um, at least if you use them like Retrofit 1 did, uh, they do. So in version 1 of Retrofit, I could assume complete success and accurately ask for um, an expected type in my network call libraries because the try catch block assured that execution would stop before any valid code was reached, um, which is kind of like letting code return more than one object type. So maybe a more complete way of saying this is for Java. Um, one method can return one declared object type and an infinite number of error types, which is kind of a cool thing to say. Um, so it's kind of cool. Like, it's for like a, um, if you're designing a library, it's like kind of an interesting thing to keep in mind. Um, so given my presentation up to this point, you might be wondering why did the library maintainers move away from this format of error catching? Um, it's a good, so uh, a good question, and so I thought about it, I was like asking myself, okay, so what were the project maintainers like optimizing for? Um, I really believe that it was not the use case that I was employing Retrofit in, which is sort of a synchronous call model. Um, if you look through the change set that came through this change um, to the error catching, there was another change that was um, pretty illustrative for why this change was made. Um, I think it answers a question that I asked. Um, so this slide is kind of missing a key part of it, but I'll try and talk through it. Um, in version two of Retrofit, they condensed the API for a service call down to a single object type, a call object. Whereas previously, if 
you wanted to make a synchronous and an asynchronous call to the same endpoint, you would have needed in V1, and this, I didn't show it up here, I just showed the synchronous version, you would have to write a second call for the same endpoint in order to make it asynchronous. You'd have to pass in a callback object. Um, by making this change and returning a call object for every endpoint, um, it allowed you to do like asynchronous and synchronous calls using the same method in your service declaration. Um, so it, it really simplified your life as a biased observer. Um, it greatly, it greatly um, benefited projects that are using asynchronous callback frameworks in their network requests. Um, projects that didn't, which is like me, um, it kind of ended up more as a wash. I have to like put more error checking code in different parts of my application um, to deal with this like uh, callback up call object is cool. Um, cool. So as it stands, like retrofit still remains, in my opinion, the best API for, for Pojo Glue available um, for Android. Uh, these changes made a really great case study about the relative merits of error handling and how you can use try catch blocks to do interesting things in code. Um, so I'd like to thank Square Engineering for inviting me here today. Um, it's where you get the opportunity to openly critique a library in a forum hosted by the organization that sponsors its development. Uh, so thank you, um, and thank you for all of you for being a great audience. Um, if you've got questions about anything today, hit me up on Twitter um, at NiftyNet.